You cannot skip out on a preservative if your product includes water. If your product is made up of only oil-based ingredients, like vegetable oils, or butters, or oil-based extracts, or like any other oil-based ingredient like waxes, then your product doesn't need a preservative because where there is water, there is life. So there has to be water in the formula in order for it to create bacteria, mold, yeast, all those nasties that we don't want in our products. Now there are special cases here and there. Say you have a oil-based product, which is known as an anhydrous product. So if you ever hear anhydrous, it means a product only contains oil-based ingredients. So if you have an anhydrous product that goes into the shower, which means it might get water in it, then you do need a preservative. So an example of a product like this would be body scrubs. We open those up, they have typically big wide openings and most likely water is gonna get in there. So we do need some kind of preservative in those types of anhydrous products in order to prevent all the gross stuff from growing in the product. So the first thing you need to ask yourself when it comes to choosing your preservative for your product is, is it water-based or oil-based? Is it aqueous, which is water-based, or anhydrous, that's oil-based? And if it's anhydrous, it doesn't need a preservative unless it's gonna come into contact with water. If you do have an anhydrous product that needs a preservative, you need to look for a preservative that is oil-soluble. So that's kind of the first thing you need to figure out. Does your product need to be oil-soluble or water-soluble? And you could even use an oil-soluble preservative in a water-based product if it's an emulsion. So you really just gotta think, can this preservative be mixed into my product. Another thing you need to ask yourself is, does it fit the criteria of the marketing of this product? So is your product being uh, marketed as natural or eco-cert? Then you need to make sure your preservative is eco-cert or naturally compliant or like accepted in the natural community. But there is, this is a gray area because there's a lot of different things you could really do because it's your brand. There's no legal definition of natural, at least here in the United States when it comes to cosmetics. So you could even use a non-natural preservative in your product and you could still call your product natural. It comes down to what your brand's philosophies are. And not only that, you could even advertise your product as being like 99% natural because the 1% that's the preservative isn't natural. And people are typically fine with that in the natural community. It really just depends on who you're trying to market towards. So that's another thing you need to consider is it eco -cert, naturally compliant, or just accepted in the natural community. Do your research on that one. But also I do think it's important for you as a brand to educate your consumers. There's nothing wrong with non-natural preservatives. So I think it's also 100% okay for you to choose to use these non-natural ingredients, even though you're marketing your brand as like natural. I think it's okay to also then educate your customers like, this 1% of the product isn't natural because of the preservative and this is why we're using it, yada, yada, yada. So that's all up to you. Another thing you need to consider is what's the pH of your final product? If you're new to formulating, formulating for beginner series, I've already talked about pH, but your product has a specific pH or you need to adjust it to a specific pH depending on your ingredients you're using. Now, when formulating, do you need to add the preservative while the product is still hot? Do you need to wait and add the preservative after it cools down? This is something else you need to consider. Most of the time, if you need to heat up your product, you can just add the preservative once it cools down. But there are some cases where the product is gonna be hot the whole time you're formulating it and there is no cool down time because it might like solidify or something. You'll need to find a preservative that is not heat sensitive. When it comes to appearance, that's not too much of a big deal. Kind of just depends. Like if a preservative has a yellow color to it, you might choose not to go for it because it might change the final pro uh, color of your product. But most of the time it's not enough to change it, but it could. Also other things you need to consider is, is it safe for the type of product you're making? Um, specifically lip products, eye products. So if you're making like cosmetics, you really need to make sure your preservative is safe for lips or eyes, or you're using it within a safe percentage of those areas, or um, if it's safe for leave on or rinse off products. You, those are all the things you need to consider when choosing your preservative. You also need to consider if your preservative is compatible with your formula, specifically with the other surfactants. Like, is it compatible with anionic surfactants, cationic, amphoteric, non-ionic? I have a whole video all about surfactants if this topic you are unfamiliar with. So 
go watch that video if you don't know anything about surfactants. Another thing you need to consider is is it sensitive to ethoxylated ingredients? So ethoxylated surfactants are PEG ingredients and examples of PEG ingredients are any ingredients that end in eth, so sodium laureth sulfates. There is a good handful of anionic surfactants that end in eth, so keep that in mind that some preservatives aren't effective with high amounts of ethoxylated ingredients. So specifically look out for those foaming products some of those will have those higher percentages of ethoxylated surfactants. So that means some preservatives won't work in those kind of formulas, but also ingredients like satirith 20, there's a lot of different satiriths and those also are considered ethoxylated ingredients. So when it comes to emulsions, emulsions could also have ethoxylated ingredients. Um, polyethylene glycol, so even glycols could be. I notice a lot of the glycols us home crafters formulate with aren't ethoxylated ingredients, but polysorbates, so polysorbate 20, 60, 80, those are all also ethoxylated ingredients. So high loads of these ethoxylated ingredients could cause instability with some preservatives and a high load of ethoxylated surfactants, I think would be considered like 1% at least, but I don't know, that's just me going off a guess. And scent, scent is also something else you need to keep in mind when choosing your preservative. There's a good handful of preservatives that have like an almond scent. There could be other scents, but almond scent is the main thing that I've noticed with preservatives, at least that's affected me. And those are all the things you need to consider when choosing your preservative. Hopefully that helps. Don't forget, I did create an entire cheat sheet of a, how many? Of 35 different preservatives. Their inky names, usage rates, solubility, if they're eco certs, optimal pH level, heat sensitivity, appearance, formulating tips, shelf life, paraben or formaldehyde free. If it's for aqueous or anhydrous products, I can't talk, you guys get the point. I give you all the details you need to know about each preservative. Of course, this isn't going to include every preservative in the world, but a good majority of them. Maybe, not a good majority. A good chunk of them, at least. A lot of the ones I could come across and a lot of the most popular ones. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the cheat sheet. Should I make more cheat sheets for like other products? Like emulsifiers or surfactants. Also, don't forget to go over and check out my Patreon where I post two exclusive videos every single month. So there is a ton of videos you can go over and binge watch for only $5 a month. Also, if you don't have access to Patreon in your country, you can sign up as a YouTube member instead. If you sign up for the $10 tier on my Patreon, you get a shout out for your small business. I'll have all these brands linked below. HB Royal Retreat Store on Etsy naturesfarmgirl.com, Let's Blend LLC, at Stardust Bath and Body, hempygirl.com, shoplevis.com, Owl and Lily over on Etsy, Skin Lounge Co. over on Etsy, blackpedalbeauty.com, embracebeautyessentials.com, legendarybathandbody.com, astariapothecary.com, Revega Cosmetics here on YouTube, exorebb.com, pardonaturals.com, naturalstateskin.com, thenatureinus.ca, nearcatalier.com, use the code on the screen for 20% off, earthandambernaturals.com, sharkcitynaturals.com, daytorelaxproducts.com, crownedglorylc.com, lhscentedsoapsandmore.com, JanaeRose.com, Health Nut Beauty on Etsy, VelvetTemptations.com, JourneyRoseBeauty.com, CHRBrands.com, Homestead Life Goods on Etsy, CanelaBathAndBody.com, MadhouseMamaSoaps.com, Expo.com, Mystical Morning on Etsy, Seventh House and Oak on Etsy, and MyCrownAndGlory.com. Thank you so much for you guys' support. Without you guys over on Patreon, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.